Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Kevin. And I'm Irene of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Kevin, what do you think when you hear the word extremophile? For me, that would be microbes living in extreme environments such as volcanoes, tar pits, hydro vents, and many others. But what about the roof of your house? Sure, it's extremely dirty, but I don't think it qualifies in an extreme environment. Wait, are you offering to help clean my rooftop? <laughs> Very funny. No. I was actually thinking about solar panels. Oh, you must be talking about the paper by Eduardo Morales et al, where they scraped the surface of solar panels from the University of Valencia, Spain, cultured the samples, and performed sequencing. Touché. They found a wide variety of bacteria and fungi, but what's most striking is the high abundance of species found in deserts, polar regions, high salinity areas, and thermal springs living together right in the middle of Spain. Yeah, the genus Dinococcus was the most abundant in their samples, and they can be found in the Sahara Desert or hot springs. Another very common species in the sample was Hymenobacter syncyngensis, which is found in high altitude habitats like the Tibetan plateaus or Antarctic valleys. They also exposed the bacterial cultures to various extreme conditions and found a lot of isolates resistant to high, to high salt environments and exposure to UV light. This agreed with the proteomic analysis results, which reported high expression of proteins responsible for heat shock, low nutrient conditions, salt stress, and drought. So the microbes on the solar panels are very well adapted to their living habitats. But how did they end up there in the first place? One of the hypotheses was that the microbes were transported by wind, but were selected for resistance to radiation, heat, and drought. This was supported by the large number of colonies growing in their cultures that produced carotenoids and sphingolipids, which was known to assist with bacterial radiation tolerance and adhesion to silica or polyamide surfaces. So it seems that most of the microbes living on solar panels are adapted for desert or tundra-like conditions. But what about solar panels in tropical countries where it's really humid? Shirikawa et al. actually did a study on solar panels in Sao Paulo, Brazil. They found that after 18 months, biofilms were covering the surface of panels and along with particulates, reduced the power production by 11%. Furthermore, the abundant species found when they sequenced the microbial cultures were mostly fungi and algae due to frequent occurrences of rainfall, completely different than the ones found in Spain's solar panels. These studies just make me want to go around the world and sequence everything. I know, right? But that's enough for today. We would love to hear your thoughts about our show and topics you would like us to discuss. To subscribe to our Simon channel, watch more episodes, or get more information, click on the boxes in your screen. Until next time, bye. Bye.